Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for home theater geeks is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Home Theater Geeks with Scott Wilkinson, episode 49, recorded January 7th, 2011. CES 2011. Home Theater Geeks is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync with My Ford Touch. Make calls, play music, and more with Sync with My Ford Touch. Available exclusively on Ford and Lincoln vehicles. For more information and online demos, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your new account, go to Squarespace.com slash twit. Hi, folks. <laughs> We're about to do Home Theater Geeks. And, uh, Scott, you plan... Now, first of all, i got to tell you, because it's so noisy, you got to talk like this. Right into the right mic. In, you got Scott it. Scott knows. Scott's a singer, a musician. He knows how to use the mic. Um, what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be visiting a number of booths, uh, the major players in the home theater space, starting with LG, uh, which uh, is going to be... We're going to be looking at 3D, of course. Everybody's got 3D. Uh, they're using passive glasses. The real 3D style. Uh, yes, uh, as in uh, real, as in real D, real D, as in what you get in the movie theaters. Right. Uh, they claim that's good because that's a lot cheaper for the glasses. Correct. But is it more expensive for the panel? You know, it used to be, but I I've been told by LG Display, the company that supplies the raw panels, that uh, they're they're using a, now a film that's much less expensive than the glass they used to use. All right. So the incremental cost of the TV has gone way down. It's now good. on par. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I think that's one of the real disadvantages of 3D. We're not going to start the show right now, but I just want to say, <laughs> right. getting those expensive glasses. Exactly. So LG is one. Disadvantage. Who else? I mean, uh, we're in the we're in the central hall where everybody is. Panasonic's right there. That's right. We're going to go visit them next. All right. Uh, and then we're going to visit uh, Toshiba, Sony, and Sharp. Before we begin. Is there anything you want us to really pay attention to that you're really excited about here? Well, the, the passive 3D is pretty exciting. All right. Uh, the smart TV is the other thing that's, that's the TV story at the show. Uh, you know, we've, we've had apps and internet, internet connected TVs for a while, but it's really taken a quantum leap this year at the show. We've got app stores from LG and Samsung and so on, independent third party developers coming up with apps. Uh, Samsung, I think, said they have 300 apps. They've had 1.5 million downloads. So that's the other big news uh, in terms of TV at the show. And, and oddly enough, uh, LG, Samsung, Intel, several people are using the moniker Smart TV. Yeah, I guess there's no trademark on Smart. I, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Home Theater Geeks is coming up in just a little bit. We're waiting for the president of LG. Uh, vice president. One of the vice presidents, John to Taylor, us. who's going to show us around uh, the booth. Who has the thinnest TV? I saw that LG out there. looks awfully thin. Oh, there's plenty of them. Uh, Samsung's got some super thin ones, all under an inch. Under an inch. Yeah. Now, That's interestingly... I think it's LG has uh, what's called a nanotechnology, which is uh, tiny little backlights behind the screen, so it's backlit L LED, which I think is much better than full edge backlit, lit, full yeah. backlit, with much smaller LEDs, which makes for a, a more a smoother, a more accurate local dimming. Will that be just one kind, or will all the LGs start? No, doing no, that? I think they only have three of those. Okay. Uh, that well, sounds good, though. That sounds oh, like yeah, something that, to look for. Oh, yeah, that's going to be very exciting. Is Sharp back with yellow? I'm afraid they are, yes. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Quattro. Yes. No, well, we'll take a look at that. We will take a look at that. Um, they have a 70-inch. The other big thing at the show is large screen. Uh, LG has an 82-inch we're going to take a quick look at. Uh, Sam uh, uh, Sharp has a 70-inch. 82 is very big. It's that's very a, big. That's LCD or plasma? LCD. Wow. That's that's big. It's huge. It's huge. It's you like know, per, I, on projection territory. I remember a few years ago, more like six years ago, when they had a hundred and eight inch, uh, and then somebody did a hundred and nine inch uh, LCD. For, for several years, it's been a little bit of a of a size war. Yeah, and 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 of course the whole. In fact, I remember that they had their one hundred and ten inch covered up, and then one of them, I can't remember who it is anymore, just shows you how important it was. <laughs> one of them said, we've got 108 inches, and then they removed the sheet and they said, well, we are 110. 110 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, Panasonic still holds the record there with 152. Wow! Will that be here? Can we see that? It, I don't know. I haven't been to the booth yet. Because that for year after year after year was kind of the, the fun thing at CES. Who's got the biggest right. TV? Right. I don't think anybody's going to match 152 this year. And that's a 4K display. Well, and that's the other thing I was going to ask you about. Because, you know, I believe 4K is where we should be going, not 3D. More important than 3D. And I always like to look at the 4K displays. There's always been just one from Panasonic. And it's still the same it's here. It's the same one. We're not going to see any commercial 4K displays here. There are some prototypes, typically in back in the hidden secret room. Maybe we to, could find that. We might be able to find that, yes. One thing we're not going to see today on Home Theater Geeks is a high-end audio. That's not even here. That's not even it's in the, the show. Venetian Hotel. That's correct. That's correct. So you went. Have you already gone? I've gone to the Venetian Hotel. I've seen a few things there. Uh, mostly it's two-channel. Right? Stereo. So it's stereo. It's, it's not uh, surround, not, not home theater, really. No. No, exactly Interesting. right. Interesting. All right. So that's the Mark Levinson stuff. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, so. we don't care about that. <laughs> Actually, I, you know, I care about I that because I want to have a stereo. I want to bring stereos back because I want to have the best music listening experience. I don't, I'm not really so big on surround TV, but I want a great music listening experience. So maybe you and I will go over it later. We should. I don't you, have a minute to spare. I wish well, I, I know. I, I wish hardly I could. do either, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So how has this been for you? Do, you? do you have a lot of appointments when you get here? And You know, I don't make many appointments. I did make appointments for this show right? because, you know, we had to make sure we had the right I people. I hope we're going to make it. And here hey, he John is. Taylor's here. So uh, let's get started with Home Theater Geeks. We're going to just do this in chunks from booth to booth, and we're going to start with LG. John Leo Laporte, Hi, nice Leo. to meet you. Great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Now, I'm going to get on the other side so I can stick the microphone in your face while, uh, while Scott does the interview, because I'm just the ignorant guy who's <laughs> listening closely to everything you say. We were admiring, though, uh, the, the new uh, backlit LED displays. Those look pretty uh, sweet. They're fantastic. It's amazing. I've been in the TV business for all my career, and to see things get so thin and so high definition, it's amazing. And now with the new 3D technology, smart TV technology, we're really transforming the, the whole home theater experience. Now, what's your thinnest TV you got in the, in the booth right now? Uh, I don't remember all the specifics, but less than an inch deep on uh, you know a 60-inch uh, a screen. Is, is, that, is that because consumers really want that? I mean, is that what's driving thinner and thinner and thinner? You know, I think many consumers are drawn to that because it's so elegant. It's and sexy. Cool. It's sexy, uh, but it's also uh, something our retailers are demanding. I mean, that you know, this is something that's a competitive edge. Who's the thinnest? That's the first thing we asked, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I can't say I know exactly who's the thinnest, but I know there are plenty of really thin ones around, including yours. It's a Shoot. challenge, though, to get all that electronics in a very small, thin case. Uh, does that make it more and more difficult to manufacture? Well, it's a challenge. It's you know, but you know, our company has seventeen thousand engineers working around the clock <laughs> on this kind of stuff. It's more than Google. <laughs> it's great. Now, can we go take a look at some of the TVs? Let's go take a look. Yeah. We're going to take a walk. So we'll follow John Taylor and take a look at some of the TVs here at the LG booth. We're at CES 2011, and please forgive all the noise. It's a, it's a very crowded show. Usually as CES goes by, the show gets less and less crowded. But in this case, uh, it seems like it's getting more crowded. John's going to lead the way. He's, a, he's the big honcho. We're going to walk right through the crowd. Pay no attention to us. We're walking right in front of the Look entire this, uh, audience here for I this ha I have to demonstration, say, but we'll get a little I don't quiet. know if this is the biggest CES ever, but it really feels like it. I'm hearing rumors of a quarter of a million attendees. Really? It's never been so crowded in my experience. This is quite amazing, oh, yeah. even on the second day. It's a phenomenal show for 2011, and for LG Electronics, it's huge. You know, we, we brought uh, some 20,000 glasses to hand out for, for people to experience. Uh, our new Cinema 3D. We went through over 10,000 in just the first day. Wow! Incredible. So, so we got now, Cinema 3D over here. These are the passive glasses. We are not active anymore, right? Well, we're, LG has both technologies. Active shutter technology for certain models, for plasma, for instance. And that's, that's largely a brightness issue. Uh, you know, with the uh, plasma technology, we needed to use active shutter. And, you know, some of the concerns about um, that active shutter brings are less prominent with plasma because of the ultra fast refresh rate. And people are used to these passive glasses. These are very much like the ones you wear at the theater. Exactly like the same ones in the theater. In fact, they in fact, are. You could take these to the theater you and use them. Take these to the theater. These, is this the Real D technology? Uh, this is Real D compatible technology. And you know the the fact is that uh, you know 
the, the cost of active shutter glasses in some cases can be an impediment. When you think, I agree with impediment. you. It's serious impediment. You know, when you think of 100 to 150 dollars a pair uh, for consumers to, uh, if you have a, a large family or you want to bring friends over to watch the game, now with Cinema 3D, we're going to sell party packs of glasses, and you could have 20 of your friends and family over to watch that special sporting event in 3D or that great movie. How right. low can the costs of these glasses go? You know, they're going to be uh, under $20 a pair. They're, they're inexpensive. You know, it's amazing. They're working already. You look like you're actually in 3D, Scott. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Just don't go like this. Whoa. <laughs> He's always been one of the most multidimensional guys I've known. So. These do cut a little bit uh, of brightness out of the uh, out of the screen. They're good for LCDs though, because you've got plenty of brightness, right? When, when you see this, and I'll show you in a second on our LED screens, uh, it is amazing. Let's go look. Let's go look. Yeah. Okay. Cinema 3D. We'll start there. Okay. I mean, I, I have to say, this is easily the most crowded hall. Uh, we've been to all the halls. This is the Central Hall, and, yeah. and this is worse than New York City subway at <laughs> rush hour. No, you're right. But we are jammed exactly in right. here. Oh, great! All right, excellent. I need one for the camera. <laughs> Let's see if see if see if this will work. Are you 3D now? <laughs> Next year, you should you should bring a 3D camera. Well, you know, there's, there's a quite a few 3D cameras. In fact. That may be. We end up being Sony 3D. Sony introduced a couple, at, like at the $1,500 yeah, range. Panasonic's got a couple. Yeah. I know. I've actually been interviewed twice with camera crews with 3D at the Really? Show, it wow. Not, so it's, wow. It's, it's here. It's happening. So uh, we have lots of kiosks to show how 3D works, how Cinema 3D works. Um, this one, I think, can serve two purposes. We're actually showing some of the first streaming 3D. Through really? Voodoo. Oh, through Voodoo. Oh, great. Uh, Voodoo made their announcement. Well, we might have to get 3D cameras in that case. Voodoo's going to do 3D streaming. Wow. 3D streaming now. And, you know, this ties closely to our smart TV platform that I hope we'll have a minute to talk yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look. Now, the folks at home aren't going to see anything. No, and uh, they're going to see a double image on the screen. I'm not. I'm seeing birds. You're seeing real 3D. Yeah. And well, it looks great. Stereoscopic 3D. Now, do I have to? Is there any optimal viewing distance for something like this? Does it matter? Well, actually, what, what Cinema 3D does that uh, Active Shutter can't, it gives you a much wider viewing angle. And you'll see, even off axis, you get a really nice 3D experience. That's now, right, when because when you're on with active glasses, you have to get that sync signal, that IR sync signal coming to the glasses. You move too far off, off axis, and it loses it. It loses it. Or, you know, when you're watching TV at home, you know, even if you're engrossed in the movie, you may want to turn your head or you, you talk, and that's turn, another, talk to somebody and, and you lose sync. And that's another thing about passive versus active, well, on LCDs anyway. When you tilt your head with an active glasses, the, the screen either goes dark or you get double images. But with, with these uh, passive glasses, you don't. You can lie on your side and watch perfectly fine. You know, i, I got to say, you know how anti-3D I am. I know. I really think it's a gimmick. However... This, change, this may change <laughs> this my attitude game changer for because you. the cost of the glasses was an issue for me. The weight, these are very light. They're very comfortable. They don't bother me at all. You're both wearing them with spectacles underneath. That's right. I'm an eyeglasses wearer. That was always an issue. These are very, very easy to wear. And let's put this gimmick into perspective for consumers. I mean, 3D is, as more and more content comes on stream, 3D is going to be a, a great uh, driver for the TV industry and a great benefit for consumers. But... 99% of our viewing is still going to be 2D. Right. So our focus is still on delivering the, that ultimate high definition experience, the very best quality you can get in a 2D world. Right. Now, am I correct that uh, TVs are, are more and more going to be coming out, the premium models anyway, with 3D simply as another feature? Exactly right. Uh, you know, we think of it as a feature. We are not calling these 3D TVs. We're calling these, you know, you know the cinema 3D series is part of it, but uh, you know, it's it's a, a high-end feature, and actually with Cinema 3D, it's not just available on those very expensive sets. We're really bringing 3D into the mainstream. Excellent, because and you know, as, as streaming becomes more possible, and you start seeing 3D on, on services, not just Vudu, but I imagine Netflix and others will follow. Sure. That makes it also much more universal, because more and more, we're watching our TV on Online. streaming services, Absolutely not on right. disc. Right. That's, right. That's exactly you know, right. 
until now, all we've really had is, you know, a handful of Blu-ray discs to watch, and, you know, thank goodness. I'm sick, I'm sick of Avatar. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Avatar is great the first five or six times. But, yeah, right, right. But, uh, you know, Monsters vs. Aliens, I'm done with ESPN that. ESPN 3D, you know, they've, they've done Sports are great. And, again, you don't watch sports by yourself. You watch sports with a group. That's right. And having the ability to have a number of glasses at an inexpensive price makes a big it, difference. It's really an important uh, development for, in, as far as I'm concerned in the whole home theater 3D arena. So Scott, what do you think? I mean, I'm 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 oh, thinking this looks great. great. Oh, absolutely. This looks every bit as good as a the movie theater. Yeah. Now, it, it's true that with passive 3D, the one disadvantage is a loss of vertical resolution. Each eye is only seeing 540 ah. lines. So it's possible, particularly on large large screens, to uh, for the image to be to look a little soft. But I think that that's oh, an overstated problem, generally. It, this in the looks industry. HD to me. I realize it's now not HD. Correct. But it looks However, HD to me. Well, you know, and we've had this debate. You know, the purists may say, you know, you've got to have 1080p in each eye. This delivers 1080p to both eyes. So you are. It is a high definition experience. Right, and the brain is is melding them together. Exactly. Uh, I'm I'm as I'm looking more and more at, at these passive display, passive 3D displays. I'm finding less and less to object about in that regard. Yep, and we've done lots of consumer research, and you know, it's a little bit difficult because we offer both, and we we uh, we don't want to throw stones at other technologies, and the the uh, active shutter glasses, particularly those that are using RF now, uh, and the ones on plasma, they work fabulous. But uh, I think this is a breakthrough. I'll say it for you. But thank you. But three, three to one consumers prefer yeah. the uh, the cinema. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I mean, this overcomes a lot of my objections to 3D. This is much more tolerable, much less expensive, and I have to say, it's a great picture. It it's looks great. Yeah, yeah. It and that's on does. Voodoo, by the way. Yeah, that's streaming. That's and that's probably more compressed than you're going to get even on right. broadcast. And it looks great. Speaking of Voodoo, you want to check out Smart TV? I'd love to. Let's, Let's go uh, go look at it. Here, you can have your glasses back. You. I should keep them. You've got twenty thousand of them. <laughs> yeah, but you, you're going to need them. Yeah, what do you do when you run out? Yeah, they're out shopping right now. Are they really? <laughs> wow. So smart TVs, it won't just be LG. Everybody's no, going to be doing this. everybody's got smart TVs. Do they all have different platforms? Are some of them Yahoo widgets, Popcorn Hour? I know Samsung has proprietary. Most of them a... are proprietary. All right. But they are, they are, many of them offer access to the same content, like Netflix and YouTube and and me... uh, Amazon uh, Video On Demand and so on. Well, clearly, number one, you've got to have Netflix. Right, exactly, and virtually everybody does. So this is the smart TV. This is smart TV. Thank you very much. <coughs> you, we, you can give it back to Walmart. You, you don't want you want Walmart to be able to look at this. <laughs> so um, the key to smart TV for LG Electronics is the Magic Motion Remote. At, oh yeah, it's like an Air Mouse. Walmart, Mexico. Very simple to use. You like? Um, this is like a Wii controller. Like a Wii almost. controller, yeah. Um, very intuitive, uh, and. This is a good place to kind of give you a, a sampling of what LG Smart TV is all about. This is what we call the home dashboard. It, it gives you live over the air or broadcast uh, cable television in a window. And then you can actually look at what premium a apps are already preloaded. Um, let me just see if I can. You got to have Netflix, don't you? If you don't have Netflix, you don't have anything. We actually have and Hulu Plus, I see. Hulu Plus, we have a wide range of uh, preloaded ones here. Major League Baseball, Picasa, Facebook, all, really all the apps you would want. Exactly, and the new LG App Store, which which uh, will. Now, is that open to developers? Can somebody create an app? Absolutely. So we could have a Twit app in there, for instance. We'd love to have a Twit app in there. We have all kinds of new apps, and I see Revision Three. That's great. And, and you know, by the time this launches in the spring, we expect to start with about 200 and growing every day. You know, I have to say, I like this interface uh, compared even to Roku. This is a very intuitive interface. I like the size of the icons. It's uh, and the mouse makes a big difference. The ability to, difference. to use the remote to point. You know, are you guys going to do a Netflix button? Because I know some of the companies are doing Netflix buttons on their remotes. You know, we were we were Netflix's first partner when we brought Netflix to uh, Blu-ray players. As Scott was there when right. we launched that two That's and a half right. years ago, uh -huh. uh, we're having great discussions with Netflix. You look at our the remote that comes with this set. In addition to this one, it already has like 90 buttons on it. <laughs> you know, no room for more. This is great though. It's, it's a very like a simple remote. Buttons. It's and it, and I love the idea that I can point with the with the remote just like a Wiimote. That is just fantastic. It's just really really great and that is infrared RF how is that working this is this is IR IR all right yep 
Very cool. Let me show you something that's related called the Smart TV Upgrader. All right. We, and we oh, want to make sure. This is very cool. This, is, well, well, this, this can be the... the uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up here, with the yeah. Smart TV Upgrader. We definitely want to make sure that uh, Walmart gets to play with that. That's <laughs> a very important. This is, it's funny how easy it is to forget, uh, John, that really the point of this show is not to announce new products, but to show dealers what you're going to be selling. Exactly. All of our best customers from around the world are here this week. And uh, it's a really, th this is the launch pad for LG Electronics for the entire world for our 2011 product line. We, we, we press forget. We think it's for us. It's really not. It's for, it's for the dealers. We're not going to get anywhere close. Obviously, this is a f very popular demo. What is it? Too big a crowd, actually, to get too close. We'll try to get up there and get some B-roll. But uh, this is a little device we call the Smart TV Upgrader. So it, it brings that same dashboard, that premium content, and web and user browsing interface. and a similar user interface, similar user interface. Um, to any TV that has an HDMI input. Uh, a really elegant little device. It's only $149 coming out in the second quarter this year. Wow, that's great. So it'll be an external box? External box. Uh, hopefully we can kind of nose our I way in here. This is a group, so I think they're all going to move out of the way here. Maybe we can get in. It's interesting. There's a lot of interest in this particular thing. Absolutely. This is the most crowded booth at the LG booth. I think we yeah, can get I in really now. like right. this thing that um, basically converts any TV oh, look at the into size one of, that. of these LG smart TVs. This is basically the size of an Apple TV. It's yeah, smaller exactly. than a Roku. Very small. And, you know, we, we couldn't do the, um, the, air the, remote. The, the magic motion remote because right. that depends on some technology in the screen to make it work. Right. But for this little box, we have this really beautiful little remote with just several buttons that, that makes it happen. So with your internet connection at home. And, and HDMI to and the, the TV. HDMI to the TV, you're ready to go. It looks like gaming on this as well. It has gaming capabilities. There are gaming apps on the smart TV platform. Interesting. Not on live support, but, it's, but gaming apps. Absolutely. Yeah. John, thank you so much for giving us a great tour. You've grown in stature. Oh, I'm sorry. He's, he was just standing on a booth. Thanks, We're John. so glad you guys could be here really today. Really appreciate it. Our Enjoy pleasure. Thank you so much. LG Electronics, great stuff. Really nice stuff to see. Thanks so much. We're going to move on now. Yep. Thanks, John. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. By the way, uh, our coverage here today, as, uh, as it has been throughout the uh, visit to CES, brought to you by our friends at Ford. Excellent. I just talked to the CEO of Ford, Alan Mulally. Oh, what yeah. a, he kissed me. <laughs> right here. I'll never wash this cheek again. <laughs> I, I have to say, I really like the partnership we have with Ford because this is a company that uh, really, the reason they're here, sees itself as much as a consumer electronics company as a car company. And what they're doing is they're building automobiles that connect you to the world of your consumer electronics through Ford Sync and the new My Ford Touch, which really is great stuff. Now, I have, I'm starting to feel a, a little out of date because I have a 2010 Mustang. That's last year's Ford Sync technology. <laughs> I still love it. You know, true hands free calling. I press a button on the wheel and without taking my eyes off the road or hands off the wheel. By the way, I created that line. Alan's using it now. Ah. That's my line, Alan. Ah. Don't take your hands off the wheel, your eyes off the road, and you still can call. I say, I call Scott Wilkinson at home. It dials the phone for me. I can say, play the Rolling Stones, and on my iPod or iPod Touch or my, uh, my smartphone, it'll play that. It's really amazing. It comes with a USB uh, connector, uh, and now on the My Ford Touch with SD card uh, slot and two USB connectors, so all of your content is easily brought to the car, and you're never out of touch. Traffic turn-by-turn -turn directions, traffic alerts, uh, it has 911 assist uh, for safety, just a lot of great features. You were, you were driving a Ford I Sync. I actually got to drive a Ford Hybrid, uh, the Fusion, out from LA. Uh, which, you drove here in I a drove Fusion? drove here in a Fusion. And the Courtesy new My Ford Touch, I'm mm -hmm. jealous. Courtesy of Grace Note. Right. Grace Note. They uh, make the CDDB data style database that's correct. in that. So when you, this is really cool. I'll put a CD into my CD player on the car and it recognizes it, lets out all the tracks, and I can call for that CD by name and I can call for each track. And yep. it, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. Grace Note even did something that I haven't tried yet, which is if you put, if you connect your iPod and they've, they've included some. Um, uh, nicknames for bands, so you can say "Play Fab 4 <laughs> It'll go to find the Beatles. That is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. They've got it up to ten thousand commands now that Sync recognizes. Wow! I've used it almost every night to call my wife at home. Isn't it great? Yeah, as I'm driving around in this horrible Vegas traffic, and you, you know, can say, say "Where am I?" At home. Yeah, please and get me boom, out of here. That's there, great. There's, there it is, and I can chat with her while I'm, you know, waiting at these extra long traffic lights. There you go, an unsolicited testimonial. 
get the Ford Sync, or if you get a Ford Lincoln Mercury with the My Ford Touch, you'll even love it more. It's Absolutely. just awesome. And it took me a half a tank of gas to drive here from L.A. Oh, the that Fusion, Fusion yeah, is amazing, beautiful. too. Beautiful. Well, right now, Alan Mulally's on stage giving his keynote, and they're announcing the new Ford Focuses for 2012, including hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and fully electric uh, Ford Focuses wow. that will be coming out over the next year. And he told us an interesting thing. They're going to make all of the same... All, all of these different kinds of vehicles, gas, diesel, electric, hybrid, and plug-in hybrid on the same line, and as demand ramps up for any particular technology, they just make more of that. Wow, that's it's, so cool. He is brilliant. Ford is doing amazing stuff, and if you want to drive the best car on the road today with the best technology, there's just no question in my mind, you go to your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer, and you try the Ford Sync. Ford and Lincoln dealer, if you want to try my Ford Touch, or go to Sync My Ride podcast, and you can watch the videos and find out more about it, but you really have to drive one. And thank you, Ford, for sponsoring Home Theater Geeks and all of our coverage here from CES 2011. All right, let's all right. move on. So We're getting ready for a, a visit to Panasonic. Of course, Panasonic has lots of 3Ds. This is, in my opinion, one of the best booths when you first come to, uh, into the door in the central hall. This is, for most people, the first thing they'll see is this giant video wall, the blue lights of Panasonic. It really gets your attention. And you can imagine how much a company like Panasonic pays, not just for the pride of place, because this is the first thing you see for most people, but also for the booth itself, millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. We were talking to some of the people who were building these booths, and they started the day after Christmas. They've been building these booths for a couple of weeks. It takes a long time, and uh, and, and and they spend a lot of money in it. They do a great job. So we're uh, we're really thrilled that we can come here and show you this. And oh, show yeah. You the, if you don't come to these trade shows, you don't see these. And all of this is not for us. It's for the dealers. That's right. It's amazing. That's right. That's right. Panasonic, it's a, what's even more amazing is a, a booth like this, it's different every year. <laughs> yeah, they can't reuse the old booth. Now, interestingly, when we get to Sony, uh, they, have a, they had the same booth for like three years. And now they got a brand new one with like a hundred foot wide screen, wow. gigantic LED screen. Is this is this the biggest booth on the show floor? You it's know, close. Got to be close to it's it. It's got to be close to it. I think LG LG John Taylor just told me that he uh, that they've increased their booth space by a third. Wow. And Samsung might be slightly bigger. Another good way to judge the uh, success of a company: the size, the of, size their of their booth. booth right? Size does matter at CES. It does indeed. This might be a 10, 15,000 square foot, maybe twenty thousand square foot booth. It is ginormous. And it's not even the biggest one. And it's not even the biggest <laughs> one. So what are we going to see here today? Are we waiting for somebody? Yeah, we're waiting for uh, my contact here. We've been a little late, so, you know. Right, we're running will, behind. We're running a little behind, but uh, well, Can we walk over and, and take a look at this video wall yeah, while, sure. we're, while we're waiting? Yeah, absolutely. I, I just Pan want... We're here at Panasonic, which of course means plasma. Uh, they, they are doing more LE, LCD TVs these days, but uh, they're really focused on plasma. Oh, now this is new this year. Used to, Panasonic's booth used to just be up here. Now it extends all, <laughs> all the way, way down. down there. And this is a little theater. You can see there's bleachers. People have just seen a presentation and now they're leaving. Uh, this is their 3D, they call it full HD presentation. Right. And so they have, I don't know how many screens. It looks like well over 100 screens. One of them's out. Which, oh, uh, whoops! <laughs> is, is somebody's gonna somebody's gonna be getting some. Now uh, that big giant that. one in the middle is probably the 152 inch. You know they make they make a mistake putting it there though because it doesn't look that big in that <laughs> gigantic set. If you were standing next to it, you might say, "Wow!" But yeah. there, it just looks like a big TV. And there, you can see they're doing. Well, they had a bit of a the 3D, 3D thing stuff. on there. Yeah. Now Panasonic's thing is full HD 3D, which means what's that mean? It means. 1080p in each eye, which means active shutter glasses. Very much what we were talking about with LG. You've got the compromise. You're going to cut the 1080p to 540. To 540 vertically. It's still going to be 1920 across for right. each eye, but only right. 540 vertically. And there are those perceptual scientists who say that vertical resolution isn't as important as horizontal the, the, resolution. The mind takes care of it. Yeah, exactly. And, and the eye is more sensitive to horizontal resolution than it is to vertical resolution. Right, right. You know, to me, I, it, it, it does impact crispness. I yeah, would say if exactly. there's one attribute that more lines represents, it's a crisper image. Correct, correct. Now, the, uh, on the other hand, so they're using active shutter glasses. All they have to to get 1080 to in get, both eyes. To get 1080 in both now, eyes. Describe briefly, because we're, we're waiting to, uh, for our host for our here. Hoster, yeah. But briefly, the idea of active shutter is only one eye is on at a time? Correct. 
uh, when uh, and only one image is on the screen at a time. So when the, when the right eye glass is open, the right eye image is on the screen. And when the left eye glass is open, the left eye image is on the screen. Interesting. Now, of course, when we're looking here, we see both images. Right, because it's going so fast. It's, it's going 60, 60 frames a yeah. second, 60 yeah. feels a second. Exactly. So you're, you're, in effect, seeing both. But when you put the glasses on, those glasses are also shifting 60 frames a Correct. second. Correct. However, I will say that one of the disadvantages of active glasses is that they are darker. They let less light through than the passive glasses, partly because they both close for a short period of time between when one is open and when the other is open <laughs> so, in order to eliminate crosstalk, uh, which, which is when you, the left eye sees the right eye image and vice right. versa. They, want, they need to eliminate that. Because or, the timing's not perfect, they have to have a, a millisecond where micro, they're both microseconds. microseconds where they're both closed. Exactly. Interesting. So that does dim it, of course. It does dim it more. Is uh, it perceptible? Yes. It is. That's one of the advantages that uh, the passive glasses people are touting here right. is that it's a brighter image. I got to say, and, and I'm not blowing smoke here, you know how anti-3D I've been. I know. That makes a big difference. Those passive glasses have moved me that much closer. And if, by the way, it's the LG display and it just happens to have 3D and there's some glasses there and let's say and the Super Bowl's on and it's in 3D, of course I'm going to put those glasses on. Sure. And you you're going to buy a pack of 20 of them for I your friends. I might well do that. I hope they're less than $20 each. But I do too. I that was a little surprised that that, that was a little higher the than the actual I cost of them. I've been told at least of the real D glasses to a movie theater is about a buck fifty. So I hope I've, they don't. Um, I asked my local theater in Burbank, and they said they were like to the theater. They were like five bucks. Okay, all right. Maybe it's a buck fifty to make. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> five bucks to charge. They've got, they've got to. There's uh, still a big markup at twenty bucks a pair. Yeah. I hope they. I hope they see the light and say. You know, it's more important that we get people's get to have get these glasses in people's hands so they see 3D, so they buy the TV where we make exactly, our money. They exactly. shouldn't really be making much money on the glasses, no, if you I, ask me. But I, no, I have to agree. I'm not in the TV business. <laughs> oh, here he is. Oh, great! Just in the nick of time, our Panasonic concierge is here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gary Scott Wilkinson. Hi, Scott. How this are is Leo Laporte. Leo Laporte. The Twit Network. We do uh, Home Theater Geeks is our uh, home theater podcast. Oh, About 50,000 people watching right now as we're live. So say everything. Be very careful. No, I'm just it's, teasing you. It. But we are live. friendly show. We are live right now. I'm going to get on this side so I can hold a microphone in Gary's face. That's just what I love. <laughs> That's just what so we've I been love. sitting here talking about Panasonic uh, uh, plasmas and the dis and the uh, echo sure. movement. Uh, sure. I know that you've got a lot of smart TV functions going on here, and 3D is obviously a very big thing. Yep. So uh, what uh, what in those areas can you tell us about what's new this year? What's the big message? Well, what's the big you, message? Yeah. Let's break down the areas, I guess. For for the echo products, we have uh, Panasonic has been 40 years in the echo. You know, going green and with the number one company by 2018 uh, to be green innovative. And we have home appliances. We have things for automobiles. We have everything to create, store, save, and then manage all of that energy uh, for a zero CO2 or zero carbon imprint uh, society. So we're already well into that. Excellent. Uh, for the digital imaging area, we have our 3D camcorders. We have our, our still cameras. Those 3D camcorders are new this year, aren't they? Yes, they're new. Uh, 3D is a very, very hot this year. Now, you've, ha you've had professional 3D camcorders or, or video cameras for a while, but are these now consumer units? Yeah, these are, these are consumer products. Uh, they're here on the floor. What kind of price uh, ranges are we talking about? Uh, you know, for price ranges, we'll have to go over to those, those areas. I'm no. more at this level here. Okay. Uh, but uh, we, they, we are making our way. It's a 10th anniversary in the digital imaging area. So with Panasonic leading the way uh, in digital imaging and also the reliability of Panasonic, because Panasonic manufactures all its own parts, so all of our cameras and camcorders are very reliable. I what a used Panasonic for years. I'm a Lumix fan for the oh, still yeah. cameras. I have my GH1, my LX3, the new LX5 is great. So everybody knows Panasonic makes great cameras Absolutely. and great camcorders too. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting though that you're moving to 3D. How much of that is driven by the fact that you make 3D displays and you need more content? Well, I mean, it's all driven by the market research and everything. I'm not in the room when those decisions are made, but obviously there's a big demand for it because everything is going 3D and it really is the next, it's the next bump up in the experience. I guess if you have a 3D TV, you want to see little Billy's soccer goal in 3D, why not? With a, with a ball coming right at right you. Right at you. You want to be able to duck out of the way when right, you're Right, exactly. On your this is another big theme at the show, I think. Panasonic's not the only company 
to say, you know, we, we want people to have their own 3D experience to create their own 3D content right. with cameras. I think you have still cameras as well that are 3D, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, sure. Yeah. So uh, with both of those, then you have more to show on your TV, and it's personalized, right. which I think is a really good uh, trend. Right. And, and we are changing the TV experience as well with the uh, IPTV as well, with, right. with Viera Connect. We have a very big, nice display here at the show floor. It's getting crowds like you wouldn't believe. Well, Gary, you mind if we go walk around a little bit and see some of the things that are on the floor today? Sure, absolutely. Whenever they have uh, camcorders or TVs that they want to demonstrate, they'll always have something to shoot. And it's always something interesting and very colorful. Today, they've got a sand sculpture, and it's actually live. This guy's carving. Oh, he's actually carving. A beautiful it. sand sculpture. The kind you'd see on the beach. They must have trucked in a ton of sand. And, uh, and it's really remarkable. And, of course, what you, what you see here is they're shooting it with their 3D camcorders. And then displaying it on these displays right below. Right. And uh, people are walking up to uh, mounted glasses so they can see what the, the camcorder display looks like. So it, it's always, uh, it's always a, a little competition to see who can create the most creative um, uh, set for shooting, whether it's a color camera or, a, a, in this case, a 3D camcorder. Now, this is very nice. I don't think I've ever seen this before where... You have the glasses mounted on a permanent mount. You don't have to like put them on or take them off. They're always synced because they're always pointing at the right. at the uh, IR sync signal, and you just walk up to it. That's actually really cool. Well, it works. <laughs> it's pretty dim, though, isn't it? I'll tell you the well, there are a couple of negatives. It is dim, and in fact, it's probably a mistake for them to show what they're shooting next to the display of what it looks like because right, it's because it's so much brighter in, real life. brighter in real life. It's also let's I'll be honest with you, um, because it's a static shot, you really don't have a sense of how 3D it is. There's yeah. a little bit of modeling, but uh, I think I want to see more motion to be. Yeah, you know, I, to I be would frank. agree with you. Yeah. And I, I've seen a number of uh, displays or demos that are doing uh, still shots, and it, it really isn't as effective. No, you need the, you need a ball coming at you. Yeah. And that's why directors uh, keep using those kind of gimmicky, gimmicky effects. Yeah. yeah, I don't like yeah. them particularly myself, but, you know, they are what they are. All right, we're going down into the pit. That's right. This is where Panasonic is showing its TV displays, and of course, this is also where that big theater is that we saw earlier. Is, uh, is are, are all the Panasonic's Vieras, is that the yes. product line? Yes, that's okay. their entire product line, and I don't understand why companies do this. Sharp has Aquos, Panasonic has Viera, Sony has Bravia. Sony used to have multiple uh, labels. They had the Vega, the, and they had, uh, 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 I can't remember what the other ones were, but Bravia and Vega Bra were alive at the same time. But right. now it's all one badge it's for the one, whole so, company. You know, in, in my opinion, why even do it then? I right. Mean, it's Panasonic. It's Panasonic, exactly. You don't need the extra word. Viera actually comes from visual era. It's, an, oh, it's a contraction. So, so that's a little weird. Aquos doesn't mean anything except, you know, it kind of is suggestive of, uh, of, of water, liquid. Right. Liquid crystal. Now, I, I, you know, Panasonic... Uh, does make LCDs. Yep. They're best known for their plasmas, plasmas as by they far. have been for years. Right. But they're not the only plasma maker. Samsung makes some very good plasma and panels. And LG as well. as well. LG as well. Yep. Um, so it's very difficult, I imagine, to, to distinguish yourself. Uh, it used to be, we even said it, Pioneer and pa Panasonic for plasma. That's, that's right. Bees. That's right. But that's not true anymore, is it? No, it isn't. Uh, LG. Well, first of all, Pioneer's gone. Pioneer's gone from, from the Samsung plasma. Samsung and business. LG make very credible plasma displays. That's right. That's right. In fact, we will see some of those. Uh, Let's get a shot. Shortly. I just want people to see. This is oh, yeah, the here's 3D their little camcorder. camcorder. And, of course, for something to be 3D, it has to have two lenses. It looks like it's got a single pickup in here. So it sounds seems like the 3D is actually going to be happening inside this additional piece. In fact, if you look at the body of the camcorder, it's very much like a traditional Panasonic camcorder. Absolutely. A flash memory camcorder. It's just this additional gray piece on the front with the two lenses. Uh, I would, I would guess that that's what's happening in here, is that the 3D is being resolved into a single image, which is still is being recorded. I'm but I not sure know. about that. I, we should find out. I don't yeah. know the answer to that. Yeah. I would be surprised if it were a single imager. And, of course, they also have the same thing with these still cameras. A Those Lumix stereoscopic yep. still camera. We've had stereoscopic cameras for a long time. Long but, time. But now there's a market for, right. for 3D. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Next is Toshiba. Right let's over. move over to Toshiba now. So thank you, Panasonic. It was great to see you. So here we are. Oh, Tosh the big thing at Toshiba, glasses-free 3D. Now this I don't believe, and Auto there's a long line to see it. I gotta say, right. this I think is the I'm line to get sure in. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to uh, to jump, jump the, the line. line. Yes. All right.
All right, okay, we're going to bring our camera crew in here. We are actually jumping the line, and I, I hope you don't mind. This is a 56-inch TV, right. a 3D TV. Nobody's now, wearing one glasses. Of the, one of the things about it is that you have to stand in a certain location. I'm seeing both images right now as right. an example. Okay, so you, have to, you might have to go a few inches in to the fact, right or left. I don't know if ah, our camera can see it, but they put see. little foot marks on the floor. And this is the, this is the issue, the same issue with lenticular, yes. which is you have to be very carefully positioned Correct. so that you'll get a different image in the That's eyes. That's right. The, the two images are being uh, projected in a slightly different angle right. so that you see them. But as you move around... Um, you, you'll, you'll see a weird effect as you move. Here we from, go. Okay. Let's take a look. Thank you so much. I'm great. Thank you. All right. I've got my feet. Uh, oh, it works. <laughs> it works. It works. Right. I, I do see the line resolution is very much reduced. I can actually see um, uh, uh, what looks like interlacing. Can you see that, Scott? Sure. I'm sorry? I actually see what looks like interlacing. So one thing I am seeing is that the number of lines top to bottom is absolutely yes. reduced. Yes. Now, yes. maybe that's because my... Same. Well, it's the same thing as, in, as with passive glasses. Only your left eye is seeing only half vertical resolution, right. and your right eye is only seeing right. half vertical resolution. Uh, in this case, it might be more obvious uh, because of the fact that it's glassesless and they have to do other weird yeah. tricks. The, uh, I have to say, though, standing in this position, this is much better than lenticular. I can move my head just slightly, but you do have to keep it fairly in the same right, position. But, but, Bruce, you want to tell us a little bit about this? Do you have time? It's cool. He says it's cool. This is the message. In Bass, we say it's wicked awesome. It is wicked. You must be from Baston. <laughs> Other side of the state. So we were, we were talking a little bit about how it works. And I, and I guess it's, I understand that there are two different, you have to have two different pictures projected yeah. into the eyes. And it's doing that with some sort of... Lenticular lens array. It's somewhat lenticular. Right. And in, and in my, my one-on-one understanding of it, there's a lenticular lens array. And within those lenses, there's a series of pixels. Some are for your left eye, some are for your right eye. Right. But just to do a quick little back step of what makes this possible, what makes us really excited about it, is the heart of this is a 4K, 2K panel. Ah, that, which that's how we're getting us. the resolution. That's yeah. right. So, so it's kind of almost three TVs in one because you got the 4K, 2K panel. Before we go to 3D, standard 2D content is going to be four times the resolution of a 1080p So it has an up converter to, to 4K. Hey, you're kidding. So this is a 4K display. 4K panel. If I had 4K input, would I be able to see 4K picture? Still in the production planning stage, about exactly accepting of, you know. God, I'm finally getting my 4K. <laughs> it's, it's here for you. So from there, 2D content, 4K, 2K resolution. It'll also introducing our uh, tri-vector 2D to 3D conversion, conversion process. So everything that is now 2D, becomes 3D with that process. And then obviously the ideal here is to be able to watch native content in 3D for the best immortal submersive experience. Now can you can you watch 2D content on this oh, display? Does the lenticular screen uh, interfere with that in any way? Don't have an answer for that, I'm <laughs> sorry. But yeah. We were noticing that stand, even standing in the right uh, it location... It looks like it's a little interlaced. I, I'm seeing see more lines. Some lines. Even though it's 4K, how is that possible? Well, I'm not exactly sure the processing is going on inside there. And, you know, my, my answer would be at this point, this is an engineering sample, which uh, is why we have three seating positions. Yeah. When we come to market, we're looking to expand that. Um, so you'll have a, hundred, a, a wider uh, range. But again, people will have to have sit to in a sit certain in a, position. One, one because the, if you go in, in between, you see a yep. little rippling, a yep. little one, weirdness. Yeah, which, which is what the wrong pixels see in the wrong eye. Exactly. So one of the requirements is going to be, you're going to need to be where you need to be to to see the experience. In fact, if uh, our camera, Brent, if you show this uh, picture on the TV screen over here, uh, you'll be seeing that derezzed 3D. You'll be seeing the inaccurate version of it. Right. But I wonder what happens if he stands pro. No, it won't work. There's only one camera lens. He doesn't have two eyes. There's no way it's going to be 3D. <laughs> but, but that doesn't, I have to say, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look as bad as 3D TV without a glasses looks, for instance. Right, right. It's not as extreme. But when you get on here, it really does resolve itself. It is now in 3D. There, I don't see two images. It, it actually works. Fine. That's pretty amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Bruce. All right, thank you for nice stopping by the booth. It is Bruce, wicked thank awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And I have to, much better than the lenticular displays I've seen before. Oh, you know, yeah. it's funny. Last year, we saw, same, not from this company, another company. I think Sony was making a big deal about how they had glasses-free 3D. And uh, and we, we're going to get out of here because yeah. they want more people to step on the shoes. But... Um, <laughs> I, I, I watched the display. I said, ah, lenticular, not very impressive. I went out. There was an ad display in the lobby at CES using exactly the same technology, lenticular yeah. 3D technology, and it looked just as bad. This right. looks a lot better, but... Oh, here's a 65-incher, by the way, so it's a little bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's... 
a proof of concept maybe, a demonstration. It's not right now. I don't think it's something people are going to want. No, I don't think so either, uh, particularly with the, with the fixed seating positions. Yeah, you'd have to sit in exactly the right spot. If you moved your head or you leaned over, all of a sudden the it, TV would look terrible. 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 Exactly right. Out of focus. Yep. Although I am very intrigued by the fact that they're making 4K panels. I am too. And, and that's really the, the best solution for the half vertical resolution problem we were talking about with passive glasses right. and now with autostereoscopic. Scott's going to come back in just a little bit. We're going to take a little bit more uh, of your time looking at the amazing stuff at CES 2011. We're having a great time. And I want to tell you all, thank you. Thank you to all of our sponsors, New Tech for the TriCaster XD850, LiveView for the LiveView backpack, Axis for the PDZ camera that we're getting those wide-angle views of the show floor from, but especially to Squarespace, squarespace.com. It's the secret behind exceptional websites. We use it for our inside Twit website. It is amazing. Now, it is both hosting and software. Now, one of the reasons I like that, I, look, I've installed, uh, uh, I think at last count, eight or nine different blogging platforms on my server. I've gone through them all. Uh, you can't install Squarespace on your server. You have to use Squarespace hosting. And frankly, I don't mind that. I'm done installing blog software. Most importantly, I'm done keeping it up to date. It was Christmas this year that I got a notice from WordPress that there was a major security flaw and they said, yeah, we know you're on vacation during the Christmas holidays, but you better update your site if you don't want to get hacked. I don't want messages like that. Squarespace, you don't have to worry. Squarespace automatically is up to date, automatically is kept secure, and let me tell you, you're going to make a beautiful website with Squarespace. 60 plus templates from the best designers in the world. You can completely customize them. You don't have to have CSS knowledge. Just drag and drop using Ajax. If you know CSS, you could, the sky's the limit. There's nothing you can't do. Very affordable. Starts at $12 a month. And if you use the offer code TWIT, you'll save even more, 10% off, not just for the first month or the first year, but for the life of your account. It's the secret behind exceptional web websites. I can't show it to you right now as I usually do. Do me a favor, go to squarespace.com slash twit, press the green button, try it for free, no credit card needed, set up a site, then you decide. Squarespace.com slash twit. Thank you, Squarespace, we love you. Another great sponsor. I, I know I say this all the time, but I do love our sponsors, not only because they make it possible for us to do this, but because, frankly, we choose the sponsors. They don't choose us, and we choose the best companies, companies I use, I know, people I really like in the industry. And uh, when you've got somebody like that, it's great to do uh, work with them, to be a partner with them. So anything you can do to help them out, I would personally appreciate it. Sony's uh, new slogan, which I have to say I don't really get, is make dot believe. Yeah, they had that I think last year too. I didn't. I never got that either. So I'm not sure if they're saying, well, it's make believe, or you make it and then we'll believe it, or, or if you can. Yeah, I don't know what they're saying yeah. either. Well, Sony's not notorious for good slogans. No, it's true. Previous to that, it was Sony, the one and only. Sony no baloney. <laughs> it is a big boost. It's a huge boost. It is boost. a huge boost. Oh, this, this year they're also doing television redefined because they've got Google TV. Ah, that's right, the Logitech Review. Now, Google, and this must have irked Sony no end, told all of their partners, do not say anything about Google TV, uh, perhaps because it's so bad, and yeah. Sony, uh, rather, uh, Google probably plans an update in some way to make it better. Yes, um, that, that's what I heard too, and uh, I, I got an email today from someone that said, uh, it was a headline that said, uh, Google TV asked their partners not to do too much about this. Unfortunate, but probably wise. Yes. <laughs> So okay, what right. are we going to look at? We don't have to get somebody. Let's just, no, let's uh, just look, yeah, look at right. some stuff. You're right. This is a, these are, again, very thin, beautiful displays. Right. Uh, everybody's doing thin, very nice bezel. This is, they're continuing their what's called their monolithic design. Notice it looks kind of like a, just a slate, right. a slab right. stuck in this. Uh, if you take a look at that, uh, Brent, really a gorgeous display. Now, Sony is, is really big on networking, as everybody is, but right. they've got their curiosity service, QR. Not familiar with it. Yeah, it's a it's a an online source of content. Wow, this is another they, oh, the giant. The thing I'd like to show you. Okay, here's booth. something for the future. Another auto stereoscopic display on OLED. Ah, very cool. It's right over here. OLED is difficult to make in large panels. Correct, and the um, the right right around this way. The uh, the the uh, phosphors don't last very long. Right. 
so the color goes uh, untrue very quickly. Exactly. And you can see it's not a very big display. That maybe a 27-inch uh, display. A 24.5, I believe. I notice they have feet in the on the floor as ah, well, where you're thing. supposed to where you're supposed to stand. That's the whole problem with auto stereoscopic. Let me just. Uh, oh, go ahead. But it's OLED, so the the color is gorgeous. Well, it's very rich, very vibrant. It looks just like my uh, Samsung phone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can, uh, can you see in there, Brent? And this is another lenticular style glassesless 3D display. Yeah. Although uh, I have to say off axis even, it looks fine. I don't, I don't see any. Uh, you don't see much of the way we 3D. 3D imaging. Right. Issues. And I, I saw I am this off the other axis. Day, I, yesterday or the day before at the press conference, I took a quick look. And even when you're standing in the right spot, to me, the 3D effect is more subtle. Yeah than it yeah. is uh, with the glasses. And again, this isn't something they're selling or may even sell no, ever. that's right. It's a prototype. Uh, because there are all sorts of production issues and so forth. Now, ha they are launching Sony with Discovery and IMAX, the 3Net channel, which will be a 24-hour 3D channel. Wow. And here again, they've got these great glasses on stands that you can just walk, walk up, right to. up to. Let me just take a look. Check it out. I'm looking forward to this channel quite a bit because uh, I, l I watch a lot of Discovery. IMAX does some great, great content uh, from outer space and under right. the water and all that stuff. I think this is going to be a lot better. For me, I'm not a big sports guy. Ooh, look at this, the Blue Angels. Uh, I'm not a big sports guy. I'm more of a, of a nature got kind of guy and a documentary kind of guy. So I'm really looking forward to this. Brent, you'll also see, if you look up on the balcony, uh, another 2D, or rather 3D uh, camcorder. It looks very similar to the Panasonic with the wide lens at That's the right. front. That's right. Sony is, is introducing at the show several 3D camcorders, uh, one of which is going to be like $1,500. That's which not is bad. not bad. The 3D oh, head mount, we got to see that. Come on. Okay, yeah, All right. let's, let's go see that. All right. The, so he no, won't let us, we've let got us see go the head mount display. It. All right. All right. Thank you. Excellent. We ran into somebody who can get us to the head of the line. I can't live without you guys missing this. No, we got to see it. I actually just tried it for the first time. And, uh, yeah. I didn't even know they were even showing the 3D display. The, the well, head mount. we got friends in high places. It's a uh, head mount display. It's a prototype. And these are only being displayed here for an audience that's able to come in. You know, this is the first time we're... You have to try it. it. So, Scott, why don't you get in there and be the first? Okay. Where are we going? Right in here? Oh, okay. Thank you so ah. much, Suvi. That's so nice. So, first he's going to use... Okay, so we're going to measure the distance between He's going to actually measure the distance eyes. between his eyes. And uh, you're looking to see where which lines my eyes line up to. Exactly. So you're at number three. I'm so at he number has to three. set that on the wow. head mounted so display. Wow, so we have to line them up properly. Right. So we set it for a number three, and then... And then now we put... I see there's headphones as well as... Uh, I can wear my glasses while I'm looking at yes. this? Just, just get, get up yeah, close. Get up yeah, I won't see a thing. That's right. Wow. So what are you seeing? I'm seeing... Absolutely 3D. I might, I might want to adjust the distance between the displays a little bit. This is a, um, a clip from Resident Evil Afterlife on Blu-ray. Uh, uh, it's an OLED in there, which is kind of neat. I mean, when you get that small, it's 1280 by 720. I was going to ask what the resolution is. So it's a 720p projection. Right. And you get 720p in each eye. And here's uh, some cars running around. That's one advantage of this because you have two displays. Right. So you don't have to reduce the resolution to get it all on one display. Correct. Both displays are full resolution. Plus, there's no shuttering effect. There's, right. There's no crosstalk. There's no crosstalk. No right. crosstalk at all. It really looks good. All right, I want to try it. All right, here, Leo. Wait a minute. Go, oh, he's he's got to measure, measure me you first. first. That's all right. right. I'm a little cross-eyed, so we'll see how this is going to work. Yeah, he can't figure it out. He says, oh, my God, your <laughs> eyes, they're so weird. Yeah, let's do the same. I, I'm probably the same as Scott. I, I felt that, that the, the it wasn't quite. I would have wanted to adjust it slightly. I wasn't sure whether they should have gone a little further in or out. Sometimes moving it like up or down or or in or out. 
Yeah. Well, one good thing, and I've tried a lot of head-mounted displays, it's often difficult to get the two screens that are in here to, to resolve into one, and they've done a good job of that. It really does look like a single wide screen. In fact, it kind of feels like I'm in a movie theater sitting in the middle, Yeah. Uh, and I can look left and right. Um, the 3D effect is, is very good. The quality of the image is excellent. It's the best I've ever seen on one of these head-mounted displays. But, of course, these are prototypes. They're not going to be sold, so they can put the best in here. Now, did you find you, you had to hold, up, hold on to that thing? You couldn't really put that on your head and just leave it there. Well, let's put it this way. I wouldn't dance in them. <laughs> but uh, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. It's, a, again, a technology demo right. of something that might come in the future. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Right, Thanks so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Suhi. Really That's great. It. We're going we're gonna to go to Sharp. Sharp. So how do we get there? Maybe uh, this way, huh? This way, yep. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Uh, Sharp also introduced a huge, big TV, which we will try to find. But uh, meanwhile... It used to be a battle between, I believe, Sharp and Panasonic for the largest screen. That's correct. That's and correct. Uh, you'd see the two booths si oh, virtually side-by-side side, uh, unveiling their largest screen, trying to get the pride of place. They don't do that much anymore. No. They realize Sharp, there's not much to be gained. Sharp kind of uh, topped out at 108, and when Panasonic went 152, I think Sharp said, okay, you <laughs> You win. win. <laughs> <laughs> By a nose. Yes, exactly. By more than a nose. So, They're showing uh, 3D cameras here, 3D camcorders, 3D still cameras, right. notice, portable no, 3D cameras. And notice the model where people are taking who yeah, people are taking moving. picture of. She's moving. And I like that better. And she's be in honest. a bright yellow dress. Yeah. Oh. To uh, oh emphasize my. the <laughs> the quatron wow. yellow. I wonder if George Takei's here. I wonder. <laughs> You All know, right, I, where we where where can we well, find let's this? Let's see. Uh, you know, Brent, you'll see oh, again the how thin inch. these displays are. It's and that amazing. seventy inch, look how thin that is. I mean, this is just remarkable. I mean, now when they make it that thin, do they put the electronics in a base, or is it? I guess it's back here. Well, it's it's actually notice the the this part is very thin, but then it's it comes out another inch right. or half an inch. Well, you've here. got to put the. The stuff electronics somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. Even so, this is I'm sure edge lit. Right. Well, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd have to double check that. But um, this is their 60 inch. Is it a 60? Yeah. Oh, so it is. It's not even the biggest one. Okay, let's move into the booth a little deeper. There is the i3 wall. Oh, information they, they are, intelligent with imaging. video walls. Now yeah. I'm not that interested in video walls myself. Well, it's a specialty. It's not something you'd have in your home. One of the things that's interesting about this is this wall wraps not only around you to the left and right, but also above and below. Right. So it is not a wall. It's a ceiling and a floor as well as a wall. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, actually. It's, Look at that. It's a really good effect, and I'd love to play Quake 3 on this thing. <laughs> Holy moly. You definitely get an immersive experience on this. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm I'm a little more interested. I like it. This is true CD because it's actually 3D. <laughs> oh yeah, <clears throat> look at this. They got it on the floor as well. Brent, why don't you get in here so that you can uh, give people an experience of it? There's the Statue of Liberty, and the water goes below us. The sky is above us. No, they blur. It's interesting. The yeah, left the and sides, right, they it's blur. Very blurry. But of course, your peripheral vision isn't as acute as your central Correct. vision, so, so it doesn't matter. As long as you're looking forward, right? I mean, if you look over to the side, you, you'll it's notice. Obvious. Yeah. Part of the reason they probably do that is because you'd have to use a special camera to record it. I right. bet they're faking the surround. Right, right. Uh, Look at that. Uh, now, on, digital, on a digital uh, image like this, they can have full resolution. All, oh, boy. A little vertigo oh is that thing. Oh, my God, really? Just took us for an <laughs> elevator ride. Whoa. Yeah, that is pretty cool. If you get right in here where it actually does fill Look your 180 wow. degrees of peripheral vision. It is very remarkable. Now, I ha you know, I, I've never been a big video wall fan because of the bezels. Uh, you know, the, right, they always break up the they image, but at least the they've image. got them but fairly small. This is small. not too bad. They're, yeah. they're pretty thin. There's a palpable amount of heat coming out of that thing. <laughs> it's basically a video oven wall. Yes, right. Exactly. All right. We're going to get back down off the platform, let more people take a look at this. Absolutely. This has been a great tour. Scott Wilkinson, thank you so much for showing oh, us the wow. best in televisions here at CES. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been great fun walking the floor with you. Home Theater Geeks is every Monday afternoon, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern at live.twit.tv. Subscribe to the audio or the video. You've got great guests. Do you know who's coming up next Monday? Uh, let's see. Well, next this coming Monday, this show will 
will be posted. So this I'm, is the Monday this show. This is the Monday show. I'm driving home on Monday. Okay. In my Ford Focus. Uh, Ford Fusion. <laughs> and um, then the next week after that, I've got the very first female home theater geek. Oh, that's great. Barb Gonzalez it's about is going to be on, and she's a whiz at. Um, uh, interconnected uh, uh, audio throughout the home, wireless, Roku. She's got every box there is. So you're going to want to ask her about Sonos show. because I'm a Sonos fan. I love my Sonos S5 Zone player. I Scott will. Wilkinson, thank you so much. Great to see you. As thank always. you, everybody, for taking a little tour of CES with us. Leo Laporte and Scott Wilkinson. That's it for Home Theater Geeks. We'll see you next time. <laughs>